Tomorrow, Hunter Biden will be in a federal courtroom. He's agreed to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax offenses for failing to pay taxes in 2017 and 2018, enter a pretrial diversion program regarding a separate felony gun charge. The DOJ writing, quote, from on or about October 12, 2018 through October 23, 2018, Hunter Biden possessed a firearm despite knowing he was an unlawful user of and addicted to a controlled substance. The plea deal that likely spares Hunter time behind bars lies in the hands of U.S. District Judge Mary Ellen Nareka, appointed by President Trump. The judge will decide whether to accept or reject the plea deal. And today, in what I view as a startling move, the Republican chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee submitted materials to the judge in connection with this criminal case, flagging recent politicization claims from IRS whistleblowers. Representative Jason Smith's attorney wrote in a court filing, quote, the committee member has been made aware that the defendant appears to have benefited from political interference, which calls into question the propriety of the investigation of the U.S. Attorney's Office. Now, of course, the U.S. Attorney, appointed by Donald Trump and allowed to remain to oversee the Hunter Biden case after President Trump left office, has denied all of it. The letter went on to say it's critical for the court to have this relevant information when evaluating the plea agreement. I, mean, I don't understand why politicians are getting involved in a criminal case. But also today, Judge Nareka received two different amicus briefs, meaning friend of the court briefs, opposing that plea, which they are claiming is a sweetheart deal. Now, I've said that I think, if anything, Hunter got tougher treatment than an ordinary person might get, particularly with regard to the gun charge, where I've not been able to find a single case where someone was charged with just this violation of the gun laws by a drug user over a single gun, where the person has no criminal record, no aggravating factors, no use of the gun in a crime, et cetera. But joining me now is George Washington University public interest law professor John Bonzaff. He filed one of those amicus briefs opposing the Hunter Biden plea deal. Professor, good to see you again. All right, so why did you uh, submit this brief? Well, that's what I think public interest law professors do. Instead of writing law review articles, we try to see if our legal skills can be used to help protect the public interest, and in particular, to go after possible wrongdoing. That's why I filed to get special prosecutors for Nixon. I filed a complaint which led to the Georgia criminal investigation of Trump in Georgia, and I, I guess that shows uh, I'm not carrying the water for the Republicans. I haven't said it's a sweetheart deal. What I said is that in deciding whether or not to approve it at this time, the judge should have all of this documentary evidence in front of her. She can't obviously go on press reports or media reports. It has now been filed by me, by the Heritage Foundation, and apparently also by members of Congress. And I think it's strong enough that it has to be refuted, or she's going to have to think very carefully about accepting this plea. Wait, but, but again, what is it that she needs more information on exactly? I mean, the, the U.S. attorney, David Weiss, has written numerous letters now to Congress insisting that it's not true that he was somehow meddled with, that he had the authority and the autonomy to make the decisions that he did. So exactly what is it that she's waiting for this information for? Well, let's take, let's take that. We have two people at the IRS who have sworn under oath and apparently have documentary evidence backing them up that there was political interference. Weiss has sent letters. So far as I know, he has not yet testified under oath, although he is apparently going to do so very shortly. So what we have is sworn testimony on the one hand, plus some letters which some people think is a little bit ambiguous. What I'm suggesting is that the judge has to look at this evidence and probably should not approve the plea deal tomorrow. Rather, there's enough evidence that you've got to say, I've got to look into this. I've got to appoint a special master. I've got to at least ask people like Weiss and others who've been charged to submit something under oath so I can make a decision whether or not accepting this plea is in the public interest. Well, so, again, there's nothing ambiguous about what Weiss has said. I mean, you may think he's lying. But there's nothing ambiguous. But, Dan, he didn't say it. Dan, you're a lawyer. You know you can say anything in letters you just said in your opening that lying is not an impeachable offense. Professor Bonzaff, we shall see. Thank you for your time. As always, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.